Hello grade three fours, welcome back to science. Now we've got a few things to do today, so we're gonna get stuck in. I'm gonna show you how to do it all and uh, hopefully have some fun doing it. So boys and girls, uh, for starters, your first job is to chart the growth of how your broad bean is going. Hopefully some of your broad beans are still growing. Uh, some of them I have seen have stopped growing that have been um, gotten broken or damaged but if yours isn't working no troubles I'm going to put a picture of mine up and you can just chart my one um, but if yours is still going strong then draw the new picture of it and uh, make sure you label it and do a nice careful drawing again this is our week seven so you'll be drawing it here now I'm going to put my picture up of my one actually um, this is the same one I showed you the picture of last week. You can see that it has grown this past week, but not as well as I'd hoped. I can see that it's getting a little bit black at the bottom here. There's a, perhaps a little bit of rot setting into some of these roots. Um, but you can see that um, it's a little bit bigger, but this central root has got these secondary roots coming out of it. And they are looking good, but some of them have gone black, so they might be dying. We've got to remember that beans aren't really supposed to grow in cups. So we, we uh, you know, eventually they will not survive if we leave them in a cup, and, and, and that's okay. We're just doing it for as long as we can to see how they go with their growing. So this is the one that I sent last week, and it has definitely got better. You're welcome to draw this one if you would like. Um, I actually planted another bean that started to grow really well. Um, this one here, it's also starting to rot a bit now, but it's quite big. It's grown out the top of my cup. Um, but um, I usually try and just stick to drawing the same bean. But if this one is dying, then we've got some others as examples anyways. But anyways, boys and girls, um, draw your bean, label it. Um, if yours is dead, draw my bean and label it. No problem. Okay. Hopefully some of yours are still going. Uh, they have been looking really great so far. Okay. Now, next up, after you've drawn your bean, we're going down. Um, we, this is our activity from last week. Let's just do a little quick review, some important things we needed to know. Okay, the most important parts we need to understand is that flowers will turn into the fruit of that plant or a seed bud or something similar. Um, and for that to happen, they have to be pollinated. A flower's job is to get pollinated so it can turn into fruit. And pollination happens when we get some pollen from the anther, which is the male, the boy part of the plant, okay? When pollen gets off this little anther here and gets onto the stigma, then it gets pollinated, okay? This is the girl part of the plant, the stigma. The pollen will then go down, fertilize all of these little ovules, and they will turn into the seeds of the fruit, and it'll grow into the fruit, okay? So, um... Now, now it's, it's worth noting some don't grow into fruit like we would call fruit. For example, um, just the little dandelions on the oval, those little white flowers that are all over the place. They, um, they also get pollinated just the same way and they grow into hard little seed buds and then they sprout open and then they have, end up in those dandelions, those white fluffy dandelions that then blow around the wind and get, grow new dandelions in different places. Okay, so they still get pollinated though, and that's a flower's job. Get pollinated so it can spread and grow new flowers. Okay, all right. So hopefully you remember all of that, and because this week we're moving on to look a little bit about, um, about bees. Okay, now bees are not the only creature that pollinates um, flowers, but that was the example we used last week, and it's the most common example, so we're gonna have a look a little, at a little bit closer at them and at their job. Okay, now bees, um, well, actually, I've got a few videos here. You know what, I'm going to show a little video now of some bees pollinating some flowers. Have a look. If you're a honeybee, this is your field of dreams. Bees get almost all of their food from flowers. Attracted by the bright colors and sweet smells, the bee thrusts its body and long straw-like proboscis deep inside the flower and sucks up the sugary nectar at the bottom.
Pollen, the bee's source of protein, is also on the shopping list. While the bee is gathering nectar, pollen collects on the small hairs of its body. To carry it safely, the bee stows it away in sacks on its hind legs. A bee can carry its own weight in pollen and nectar and still fly, barely. Some food will fuel the bee's own activity, but most will be saved for the communal hive. Okay, now, definitely, without a doubt, those bees are working hard pollinating flowers. Um, let's have a look at this work that we have got for you today. Okay, first, um, flowers can be pollinated, pollinated in many ways, but one common way is with bees. While bees gather nectar, they accidentally pollinate the flowers at the same time. This should actually say, while bees gather nectar and pollen they accidentally pollinate the flowers at the same time. Because uh, this is actually something um, uh, a lot of people uh, are not sure about. When, when bees are actually going around and visiting the flowers, they are drinking nectar, gathering nectar, but then they're also gathering pollen. Now, pollen is actually their, um, their main source of protein, okay? So, for example, um, here's a picture of uh, a bee. He's covered in pollen, he's out working hard. Now, this bee, while he's out working, He's drinking and gathering nectar. And while he does that, he's also gathering the pollen and then he'll take those things back to his hive. And that, that'll be food for the hive. I mean, he'll have a little bit for himself, but most of what he gathers is going to be for the hive back home. But while he's busy gathering all of his food, he's also uh, pollinating the flower. So it's a really good deal. The bee gets food for himself and for his hive, and the flower gets pollinated. So it's just a good little deal they've got going. Pretty cool. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at this bee and we're actually going to label the parts of this bee so we can understand what's going on here with, with this bee. I'm going to uh, switch over here and I'm going to um, cut and paste them and move them around, but you'll, you can just write them in, okay? You just write in the correct names. So you can copy me from this video. All right, so let's start off with some easy ones here. We've got a wing. Okay, I'm gonna put the wing up here. Uh, nope, that's roughed up again. I did that last week. Okay, there we go, the wing. All right, obviously that's a bee's wing. Okay, now let's try another easy one. It's head. Obviously. Okay. Funny looking alien head on a bee. All right. Now, I think you guys would also recognize the antenna here. The antenna is this, these little funny bits sticking out the top of the bee's head. Okay. Now, let's try something a bit harder. Okay. Now, Let's go this big part here, this, this bit here. Okay, this is the abdomen. Okay. The abdomen. Okay, that's the whole back half of the bee here. That's like it's this back part of the body. It's abdomen. Okay. Then, out the back of that, we have its stinger. That's the bit that all kids know. <laughs> because... We don't want to get stung by that. All right. Now, there's um, obviously the head, the abdomen at the back, and this middle part here of the body, okay? This middle part is the thorax. Like a lorax, but not. It's a thorax. Okay. A thorax. There we go. Thorax. Which means we're left with a couple of others. This part here. Okay. The proboscis. Okay, that bit here is its funny little pinch of things here. Okay, stuff at its mouth. 
And the last one is the pollen sac. And this is the one we're going to have a talk about. The pollen sac here. All right. Now, the pollen sac are attached to the back of its legs. Okay, now remember I said that the reason, uh, the main reason a bee goes to a flower and pollinates it is because it actually wants to gather food. It gathers, it doesn't take the nectar back home as much as it actually gathers the, um, the pollen. The pollen is what the bees need to eat back at the um, hive. Okay, and it carries the pollen on the back of its legs here, on these pollen sacs. And I'm going to show you a picture of this. All uh, right. Here it is. There we go. Here we got a cute little bee. And you can see his back leg. See, we've got the uh, the abdomen here, the thorax, the head, the antenna, all the parts of the bees that we're just learning about. And on its legs, we have these pollen sacs. Now, these pollen sacs are actually big clumps of pollen that it gathers because, um, like, the nectar is a little bit sticky because it's a bit like sugary water, okay? A little bit sticky, and it gets mixed in with the pollen and makes like a thicky goop. And then the hairs on the legs of the bee get it all stuck to it and make it like a big clump. So it carries around like two big balls of pollen, and then it'll take that pollen back home where they can eat it. Okay? So these are the pollen sacs. So it's a pretty cool deal that the that the bees and the flowers have working together. Okay, pretty neat. Now I'll move back to my picture. Now this part here, when you color in this picture is obviously going to be yellow then because these are the pollen. Okay, you're welcome to look at my picture if you want to do the coloring correctly um, or find your own picture of a bee. So I do want you to color this in. I also like how this label diagram here has a nice, uh, scale here. It says one centimeter. See, this is quite big, but in real life, a bee is only about one centimeter big. Okay, so we have our scale there to make this whole scientific diagram work properly. Okay, let's go back to our work for the day. Now, this is all you need to do for the week seven activity. Now, I know this, it's not very long, but when you're doing the um, walking after your plant as well, as doing this, that should easily take up um, your half an hour for the day. Remember, do some nice careful coloring and uh, actually would like you to put a label above this picture as well, okay? You can just call it um, a B, it's fine, okay? I do have a label on my other one, but I cut the label off by accident, okay? But all of these are labels, the title at the top, a B, and then we've got the key here, and that should be all done, colored in nicely, and organized. All right, boys and girls, that's all you need to do for today. I uh, hope you guys have a great uh, specialist day and I will talk to you later. Bye.